What is security? Security is really the process of implementing measures and systems designed for the protection of physical and digital assets from theft, unauthorized access, misuse, compromise, alteration, destruction, or unwanted manipulation. If it's a wide litany of threats, a wide litany of capabilities that we need in order to protect these assets from those threats. Security is difficult to understand, especially integrated security. So let me give you an analogy to help make it a little more clear. Imagine that you have a car, kind of an old model car, and it looks something like this. The security in this particular system was strapped onto the car as an afterthought. Now, a more modern car with integrated security would look like this. And this more modern car, of course, has security that was built in from the very beginning, from the first moment of design, from the first moment of conception, to the final moment of production. Security was uppermost in the designers and in the builders' minds when they put this brand new car together. And that's exactly what we need to do for cybersecurity. We really need to build security in from the beginning, not strap it onto our operations and systems and processes as an afterthought. Much like a car has airbags, seat belts, and other security mechanisms, cybersecurity solutions all have a wide variety of components, each designed to perform a specific task. Let's have a look at some of those components. In looking at this diagram, we have to ensure that we provide security for each and every endpoint. No matter what type of endpoint it is, no matter where that endpoint goes, we need to secure it. We also need to make sure that we have firewalls properly implemented so that we can protect our uh, key corporate assets. Now, our end users are very often going to be doing things like surfing the web. So we need to make sure that as they do that, we protect any of their activities on the internet. And that, of course, includes email. So we need to protect email as well. Now, these kinds of threats have all kinds, or, or these types of, of uh, systems have all kinds of threats that might attack them. And although we are trying to implement these individual solutions to try and find out what might be wrong, we really need to have a deeper analysis, a deeper inspection of what might be happening out there. And so deep inspection, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention services become really important to help us monitor and manage that. Now there's really a whole litany of other kinds of security devices that we can talk about. And so really the list of security devices would go on endlessly. But rather than go through a complete list, I also want to talk about two really important things. It's absolutely critical that your detection capabilities incorporate a global threat perspective. It's not just what's happening to you, it's what's happening around the world. Because what's happening over in Europe can very easily, within 4, 8, 12 hours, begin to happen over in North America. Having a global perspective on threats and getting ahead of those, absolutely critical. And of course, over all of these systems and solutions, the ability to manage these, to have a single pane of glass, to have uh, oversight and insight into everything that's happening within your environment so that you're more able to spot the trouble and more able to respond to trouble when it occurs. So we talked a lot about the different kinds of security devices. and It was really quite a long list. So let me kind of put that into perspective. And we'll talk about why companies care about security and the kinds of jobs uh, they perform and how they actually make it possible for companies to, to do business. So we've got a corporate headquarters here. And first thing that I want you to imagine is imagine that security doesn't exist. But people in that company need to connect to the internet to do research, to uh, send email, to communicate with customers. They won't possibly do that unless they have security of some sort. There's no way they will simply just connect without having some level of security. So right from the very beginning, inside the corporate headquarters, security has to be implemented from the get-go to even contemplate the idea of communicating to the outside world. So that's enabled the business immediately just by doing that. Now we use technologies like firewalls, deep inspection services, email inspection, all kinds of, uh, of the technologies that we discussed earlier will be brought to bear here to allow this level of communications. And of course, it would be two-way communications. Let's imagine that this company wants to expand and grow. So they have a branch office. And once again, imagine living in a world without security. If you have a branch office that's a thousand miles away and they need to communicate on a daily basis with people in headquarters, how do we allow that communications to occur in a safe and secure fashion? Imagine that sensitive customer information is being sent back and forth. And once again, there is no way you would do that in the absence of security. Only through the ability to allow this branch office to securely connect in uh, and to provide for not only connectivity to the internet that was secure, but also to provide an additional level of security 
between the branch office and the headquarter location. And this additional security we refer to as a virtual private network or VPN. And this provides a layer of security that's under the control of the company where they're in charge of making sure that the information can't be read, altered, or in any way harmed by anyone else. So it's critical to enabling this business that they have security supporting that. Now, the same business may have workers that are not at either of these offices. Potentially what we could do is we could have some workers that are on the road. They're visiting with customers. And if you're sitting with a customer and you want to pull up a price list, you would want to do that in a secure fashion. So once again, security enables communications from this individual through the internet to the corporate location. And again, we need to do it in a fashion that the information is not easily read by anybody else, it can't be altered by anybody else. And it's really the same story. If I have a worker that's at home, I would want to implement the same levels of security there too. So in all of these examples, you're seeing how the company and their own employees are able to use security to, uh, to basically achieve business objectives. Imagine that there's a partner of this company, and this particular partner purchases a billion dollars worth of products a year from that corporate headquarters. And they really want to make that purchasing process easy, seamless, make it more efficient. And what they really want to do is connect the computers at the partner with the computers at the corporate location. And again, there's no way you're going to connect those computers up unless you can do so in a secure fashion. So once again, what will happen is we will establish secure communications between these two environments so that they can transfer billions of dollars, potentially, worth of product, items, and purchases. And again, VPN services will help enable that kind of business level transaction. And a billion dollars is a lot of money. Imagine instead that we have a, a mobile customer. They only want to spend $100 or $200. And what we have is we're hosting a web server. And of course, we have an online store. Now, they're kind of pretty far out of the network of corporate concerns, but still absolutely critical that we provide security for this individual. And so what we need to be able to do is ensure that that shopping experience is secure as well. Because the customer is going to be sending their credit card information, they're going to be sending address information, even information about the items they purchase. You might not want anybody to know about this, and so they're securing this uh, information flow to that electronic store. So security enabled all of these activities that we've just talked about. And only through security are they even remotely possible on the scale, the scope, the speed that we are able to do in today's modern world. That's why security is essential to the economy that we know and live in today.